Hi, my name is Phil, and I'm building a Chesapeake Lightcraft Teardrop Camper. If you're at the point where you're ready to fiberglass the exterior of your camper, get online and get yourself a cabinet scraper, a burnisher, and a set of cocktail glasses. One of the challenges of stitch and glue construction is that it usually involves fiberglass cloth, or at least fiberglass tape. Depending on the weave, fiberglass may be more or less easy to mold to the shape. CLC provides a plain woven e-glass cloth. That's good enough for me and for thousands of boat builders. It's possible to work fabric gently and let it settle onto the shape of the camper. I'm not an expert on fiberglass cloth. I go with what the designer recommends. The fiberglass reinforced epoxy and marine plywood sandwich make for an extremely strong composite material, but if you're looking for every advantage, you might consider a different weave called modified twill, which apparently molds much more easily to shapes and corners. There is also a lighter and stronger S-glass fabric. If you get a crazy idea you want a bulletproof camper, I do know that Kevlar is not only expensive, but also extremely difficult to cut since it wears out normal scissors in minutes. I can't imagine how difficult it would be to cut out the hatch and the doors using something other than plain woven e-glass fabric. On the other hand, carbon slash aramid or carbon Kevlar cloths now come in really cool colors. Other fabrics do not turn clear when soaked in resin, so you also would probably need to paint your camper, and it's an odd shape that wouldn't easily be covered by a single sheet of any fabric. If you actually build a carbon fiber camper, I want to see it. Some folks build campers out of old pallets. I want to see that too. Before we get to the epoxyathon, it's important to note that you will be dealing with bubbles and air pockets. They're inevitable, and you can live with them or you can fight with them. Unless you have a large budget and you can do one of those slick vacuum bag jobs, you will get air pockets, especially where there are corners. That's why in the last video it was so important to round over the corners and make sure we didn't have any voids or unfilled crevices. If you get any bubbles or have difficulties, they will probably be at the corners between panels 2 and 3. We used denatured alcohol to clean up any dust and prepare the camper for fiberglass and epoxy. Then we drape the camper in cloth. The top of the camper gets two layers while the sides get one which overlaps the top. The most challenging parts are the overlap between the top and the sides and the corners down near the bottom. Fortunately, fiberglass is forgiving. We found stroking the fiberglass helps it conform to the shape of the camper. Gently petting the fabric and having the patience to leave it to take on its new permanent shape will do wonders to let the wrinkles fall out. You have the option of overlapping the two top layers of fiberglass with the fiberglass on the side or doing the sides separately. Amy and I were fairly sure we would have just as many challenges and flaws either way and doing it in one go means you don't have to wait until the top epoxy is cured. We used push pins to hold the fabric on the sides. After laying two sheets of fiberglass on the top, we stroked and petted the fabric until it lay smoothly, and then we pinned the side sheets on and trimmed them to fit. We left the push pins in until we had wetted the overlap out.
please enjoy the quiet and have a beer or a glass of wine or beverage of your choice because you'll be working your ass off during the next bit. Once you start epoxying the cloth, it's a bit of a horse race, especially if you're doing it in hot weather. Amy and I work well doing this sort of stuff, so we had a relay of mixing and rolling and spreading the epoxy. You use a spreader to push the epoxy into the fabric and to remove the excess. This ensures you have a close bond between the fabric and the wood. Gaps can happen while using a spreader on the outside corners, either from an excess of fabric at the corner or from failing to fill in the gap with thickened epoxy earlier in the process. As you take your spreader around the corner where two sheets are overlapped, you tend to stretch the fabric in the direction you are moving so one layer gets nice and smooth and the other gets pushed up and can bubble out. I had one such bubble at the front left corner of the camper and made several attempts to fill it in before deciding to just sand away the fiberglass, fill it in properly, and overlay some fiberglass cloth. If you do this well, nobody but you will know. I'll show you this in a future video. Before you do a second coat, as I mentioned in the epoxy tips video, it's a good idea to trim the excess fiberglass cloth. Depending on your timing and your brand of epoxy, you may be able to do your second and additional fill coats of epoxy without sanding. Unfortunately, we both have day jobs and couldn't keep the epoxy train running. That meant sanding. Be sure to level out where the fiberglass cloth overlaps. If you didn't before, you definitely want to hand sand the joints between the panels at this point. The joints are where the strength is most needed and you will very quickly sand through the fiberglass if you use a palm sander. When you're doing the epoxy, you're hurrying against the epoxy clock and so you will get drips. I used a cabinet scraper to level these out while sanding in between the layers. Invest in a cabinet scraper and a burnisher. A burnisher looks like one of those steels used to hone chef's knives, but don't use one of those, they aren't the same. One has ridges, the other is a burnisher. A burnisher is used to put a tiny sharp burr on the edge of your cabinet scraper. It's the burr that does the cutting. A cabinet scraper that hasn't been burnished is just a flat steel thingy that you rub on your wood in the vain hope that it might install levelness. If you enjoyed this video, or even if you kept yelling more cowbell at the screen, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to click on the bell so you get notified when I upload another video. Thanks for watching.